Hey guys, it's Todd, the Cybertruck Drug Guy, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I want to go through the math of how Tesla shares can get to $6,000 per share and by 2025 with just the auto business. No full self-driving, no energy business, nothing else. Just car sales alone. I want to I want to kind of go from the like explaining how I get to the math before I dive into the math. So the first thing I'll look at is this relationship between revenue. So this is basically 2016 to 2019. This is 7 billion and this is 24 billion. So this is total annual revenue for Tesla. This is their total cost of cost of sales, cost of goods. So this is everything that goes into making the Tesla products, the factories, uh, the staff of the people that assemble it, all the raw materials, all the actual direct costs to produce their goods and services. That gives us what's called the gross profit. And this is what it gives us what's called the gross margin. So this is basically a way to represent all this as a percentage. So the other thing that's really important for you to look at is this thing called OPEX or operating expense. This is the overhead of the business. This is paying all the manager's salaries. This is for research and development. This is for the, this is paying for things that aren't actually a part of producing the good or service. So what I want you to see here is how it had been on a steady uptick and then in 2019 it actually went down. And we see at the beginning of 2020 that they look more like a $4 billion operating expense as opposed to this, you know, steadily going up by six or $800 million a year. One of the things to keep in mind is that if you notice something between 2017, where they had 11 billion, and 2018, where they had 21 billion, their OPEX only went up by 600 million. So this is the nature of business. It takes a lot of energy to get to the point where you can scale something. You build a lot of it or sell a lot of it. But once you actually get the scale tool going, you don't tend to increase your overhead at the same rate as you did at the beginning or the early part. This is what is a huge driver in creating some massive profit moving forward is how operating expense as a percentage of revenue is beginning to fall. You can see that that number has been progressively been getting better. So now let's take a look at what I want to show you here is the average because remember we're just doing autos. So I want to show you what the average auto sales price has sort of been over the past five quarters. So I don't need to get into all the math here. Um, you can pause and look at it if you want to. But the bottom line is that their average revenue per car that they sold has been somewhere between 55 and or 56 and $54,000. So keep that in mind because that's going to play into what we're talking about next. Okay, so now we get to the meat of the issue here. So notice here a couple of things. We have... 2021 sales of 750,000 vehicles at an average sales price of 48,000. I'm trying to discount as China grows and as the car prices fall, I'm trying to nudge that price down. So the other thing is gross margin 20%. So I just want to show you, this is their last quarterly update and notice what their gross margin was. Basically what I'm trying to say is I'm going under what their most recent quarter has been as a, as a starting point. We can always come back and modify this if, if that ends up being too optimistic. Now, Kathy Wood over at ARK Invest has consistently built into their model this idea that as Tesla continues to get scale advantages and continues to include more software, more things like um, an app store, that we're going to start seeing these auto gross margins go up. Instead of going to that degree, I'm only going by 2025, I'm only saying they improve margins by to 24%. And I'm also lowering the average sales price every year. I'm assuming there's going to be cheaper vehicles and more of them. So I'm just going to gradually drop the price on that. 
So the big thing that matters a lot is this operating expense number. We see that I have it at 4.4 billion next year, and then I have it growing by 10% annually. I could actually be overly pessimistic here. It may grow less than this. We'll just have to see. But we'll start with this and we can always amend the model later. But basically what that means is if they if they hit this in just the auto business, that they have a net income um, $3.1 billion on just the auto business. And that's paying for the overhead of the whole company. If you use a price to earnings multiple of 50, which is fairly common for higher growth stocks, it's actually even on the low end of a company that's growing 35 plus percent a year, but we'll use that, we'll use a multiple of 50. That would be a market cap of 155 billion dollars. So market cap, it just means you take the total share prices times the price per share, and that gives you your total market capitalization rate. If we split that up by the number of shares outstanding, 185 million, that would give us in 2021 a share price of $838. Oh, you're saying, I mean, I know your eye can travel to the right and you can see my underlying assumptions, but you're like, we're almost, we're almost to the 2022 levels today. Okay, my point is not to tell you that today's price is over or undervalued. My point is to show you how you get to this number without full self-driving, without anything from energy. That's my point. But the whole point is they get a little better at profit margins. They grow their business lower than, than they have the ability to grow it. They already have the ability today to have 690,000, 90,000 Model S and X, 400,000 Model 3 and Y in Fremont, and then 200,000 in Shanghai. And then they said, by the end of 2020, by the end of 2020, this would number will be 500,000. So that is 790,000 capacity in 2020. So they don't even have to add any capacity in 2021 for my case to for 750,000 units. It's actually 40,000 under their existing capacity to produce and sell. Very realistic. So the thing that magically happens here is that as the auto business grows, their overhead, their operating expense will not grow at the same rate. And that's what will create. So they'll get a little bit of improvement here by efficiency, selling more software, get a little bit more gross margin. But then where they'll really get a dramatic impact is by not growing this operating expense number at the same pace. And that's where you start getting some startling net income numbers. So going to 3.1 billion in here is estimates for next year income. So the average estimate is $11.29. There's a low estimate of $4 per share. This is all per share income. So dollars per share. So per share, analysts are saying they're averaging around $11, someone saying four, someone else saying $21.65. So where do I have it? I have it coming in under the most optimistic scenario, um, but I have it coming in more than than the average. But we just saw with deliveries that, you know, when, when Tesla does a beat, they beat by a lot. So the point here is that this first step, this 2021 number makes sense. And in fact, the share price is way is trading way over that. If you just extrapolate down the road, you don't need to do anything dramatic in order to get to a $6,400 per share value of just auto. You're only producing 2.5 million vehicles a year. That's like 4% of global auto sales. It's not like they're running out of room. This is not, this is very realistic. When I did this, I was like, okay, that that's now kind of my floor. That's my floor now of what I'm thinking for 2025. So the same way I said, if you haven't reserved a Cybertruck by now, just do it. If you haven't bought some shares of Tesla by now, 
do it. Um, you like with Robinhood and some of the other apps, you can buy like a partial share. You can buy like twenty dollars worth of Tesla stock because it doesn't matter how many shares you buy. Wouldn't you like to have a a ten dollar bill be worth so whatever eight x so ten dollar bill? So wouldn't you like a ten dollar bill to be be so worth an eighty dollar bill? If you put in ten dollars into Tesla, if you buy ten dollars worth of Tesla stock. I think there's a good chance it can be worth $80 in 2025. So don't worry if you can't buy a share. Buy $10, buy $20, buy $50, buy $100. But buy what you can. The whole goal is, hey, just you know, get in on the ride. All right, well, that's it. I know it was a little bit different, but I'm, I'm a business guy as much as I'm a truck guy. And part of the reason I know trucks is because of business. So you're going to see me constantly going back and forth between the business part of Cybertruck and Tesla. And in fact, I am going to be doing a video here in the next few weeks on the Cybertruck as a moneymaker. So I think the money picture is a big part of the Cybertruck equation. Um, that's it for tonight. Like, subscribe, all that other stuff uh, and live stream this coming Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, I'll be putting out a uh, mini outline uh, earlier in the day um, on uh, YouTube. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.